<laughs> All right, welcome to another episode of Questionable Personalities. We're here with Jane Struwall, director of Black Mariah International Intergalactic Film Festival. Film Festival. And it's 37th? 39th. Oh, okay. Where did season. I go with that one? 39 years. That's right. And you took over when John retired, and that was I did. how many years now? It's a while, actually. Uh, it seems 2013, like it was two or three, but, 19, this is 2020, so oh, it's like seven years. Wow. Almost seven years. Mm. That seems, uh, seems like, like it went a, too fast. Right. It all, everything goes too fast. So you recently retired from teaching? I did. I retired after teaching um, at New Jersey City University for 36 years. But I taught before that, too. So I've, you know had a long history of teaching in my life. I've been in a classroom more than any room. <laughs> because think about it, you know, yeah. you, you're in school when you're yeah. five. So now I'm 60, 68. I just turned 68. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. So I've been in a classroom for most of my life. Hmm. I see nodding going on here. No, I just like to. Well, I'd yeah. like to see a uh, because you know, depending on how much you sleep, I'd have to think. You know, <laughs> yeah, which room? Or, you know, you know listen, I'm going to turn into Howard Stern now, and I'm going to start interviewing you guys. <laughs> you could do that, mm -hmm. like you did with Bill Maher. But I'm not stripping. <laughs> That's we're not stripping. No, <laughs> no. That's the old house. He's over now. that. He's, He's really over yeah. it. Yeah. So. What um, what's going on with Black Mariah? What's new this year? There's so much that's new. It's really fabulous, actually. I'm very excited. Um, and I guess I should start with the premiere uh, in February at Princeton University, who is our collaborator, sponsor, partner. Um, this year we're doing, uh, we're expanding the uh, festival premiere for to two nights. And um, we're starting on Friday night, February 7th, with a women in film program that's going to be just gorgeous. I'm really pumped about it. And then the next night will be our festival premiere, um, showing the stellar award winners. And we have filmmakers coming to both events. And just they're just amazing human beings. So tell us the first night who's yeah. going to be there. Can first you night. Tell me a little bit. First night is um, Sue Friedrich, my dear friend and amazing filmmaker, and Lynn Sachs, and Emily Hubley, and Edith Goldenhar, who was a first time filmmaker. It's just sort of like this beautiful landscape of women who have made these astonishing um, pieces. And I, I, I think they just so beautifully complement each other, the work that we're going to show. And then to top it off, um, Sue Friedrich, who was a force of nature, made, um, started working on, and now is like, she's got this great project um, going on, which is a website celebrating women film editors. And Princeton has supported her efforts and people can now go onto the web and Google um, her project and actually learn about over 200 women film editors who really changed the entire landscape of editing and film in the United States and beyond. It's, it's a beautiful project, yeah. So we're showing that too. Um, yeah, so we, it's, it's Girls Night Out on Friday, February 7th. <laughs> But all of the your programs, everything's going to be at blackmariah.org. Is that correct? Oh, yes, yes. So if anyone wants to check out the rest of it. Yeah. And the schedule exactly. always changes and more it venues always are added. Add, add, add. I mean, right now, I'm just starting to, um, you know, get the lay of the land for the 2020 season. And I only have a few of the programs up on the website, because, and they're coming in, like, all the time. So... Um, as a matter of fact, just tonight, I got a, I got an email from a, um, a group of a film sort of pop-up in Brooklyn 
who was asking me if I would be interested in programming uh, something for them. So, I mean, we haven't even opened up a discussion yet. And it's so, there's just like all sorts of cool things going on with new venues. And that's the exciting part, working with filmmakers and developing new new venues. Well, what's nice about the festival is they travel, which yes. is very unique compared to the other festivals. You have to go to them and this festival comes to you. Yep. It's almost like a Yakov Smirnov show. <laughs> In yes. Soviet Russia, yeah, right. the film comes the to film you. The film comes to you. Yes, it does. That's so what anyone we do. with a nice venue and, and little funding can host we'll it. We'll go. And, and you know, mm -hmm. do travel. That's right. Oh, That's probably right. more than you would like, but you do travel. No, no. I, lo I really enjoy it. I love going out to um, you know, the far reaches of the United States to... Uh, you know, places where people, you know, there's maybe one tenplex if or not, mm. you know, and so there's no way there would be an opportunity to, to see some of the work that we have uh, in the collection. Yeah. That's what's interesting about it. It's not what you would normally get to see anywhere. And no, it, right. It's a variety of genres mm -hmm. and you expanded it so much mm -hmm. beyond just experimental. You know, kind of, um, and you can, you you can curate your own. So if you want all animation, you can have all. So that's another Correct. feature of the festival. It's very that's unique right. that any venue can uh, can curate their own version. Of it. Yeah, yeah, and and they do. So um, here's an example: the the Dryden Theater, um, which is uh, you know housed in the uh, George Eastman Museum in uh, Rochester, New York. So the wonderful George Eastman house, you know, and the mm -hmm. museum and all that. And the Dryden Theater is incredible. And up there in Rochester, you know, there are people that are really grounded in animation. RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, you know, they have a fabulous animation program there. So, you know, they're very interested in experimental and, you know, animated uh, films. So that's sort of a natural fit for them. Then another venue that we have been working with for many, many years is at Bentley University. And they um, they have a program uh, that's international in scope. And they come up with these like amazing themes every year that forces me to, okay, let me see, what are we gonna, you know? And this year they have a wild theme that took me a while to wrap my head around, but, um, but I nailed it. I think. Yeah, I do. I What's think I nailed theme? it. The theme is um, uh, magical, you know, magical realism. Oh, and, that's pretty cool. Right? That's magical realism, trolls and witches. Oh, my. <laughs> right? And so, the, I mean, they give me, it's almost like they, they set up this, like, okay, Jane, you have to do X, Y, Z. And uh, then the other part, including the witches and trolls and magical realism, is um, they want international selections. Well, that's very uh, FAMU old school, like Eastern European magical right? realism. Right? Yes. And lo and behold, this year, I have the films for their program. And at first when, you know, when I'm reading this, like, what? Oh, God, what am I going to do? And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. But this film, this film... We have a film in the in the uh, collection this year that is just like it's wild. It's called Histories of Wolves. It was shot in the far reaches of Portugal, up in these mountains. It might as well be Transylvania, but it's in Portugal, for real. And um, it's these people who look like they're 150 years old telling stories of werewolves in the in the mountains but they're really just 20 in the smoke a lot <laughs> oh, right no it's wild i mean it is it's just wild this film so that's going to bentley that one is definitely and there's others too another insane film that uh i'm going to be sharing with uh, the folks at bentley is called the head shrinker Sounds fun. And it really is about a head shrinker, uh, but he shrinks animal heads. And I know, I know. Hmm. Um, and there is a, um, you know, a disclaimer 
at the bottom. Oh, okay. Some of these <laughs> images may be disturbing to some people. These are not animals that he has killed or maimed or hurt in any way. They're all animals who he has found in the woods. And he's from South America. And he somehow, I don't know. So I, I think that that's spoiler alert. That's all I'm going to say about the head shrinker. But it is... It's of course another really wild well, film. A couple of years ago, you had that girl who was a taxidermist. So that was that was a big I know, hit. That's a beautiful film. I love that one. That was really yeah, fun. I know Mickey's pets. That's right, Mickey. Mickey's pets, yeah. a terrific it's a film. Great short film. Yeah, about this young woman who, um, yeah, she's a taxidermist and she's just like really good at it and loves it yeah, and I, teaches it. Yeah, in that in that movie, you had a scene where uh, she afterwards all the. She compares her skills with other people. With the, I know, and most of them are older, Much older, men, older yeah. white men with yeah. long beards, and you know, right. And then there's Mickey with her tats yeah, she looks all like over. A she's chick. so cute. She doesn't look like yeah, a she's tats really members. adorable, really gorgeous young woman, and it's yeah, kind of very, fun. Fun very fun. yeah. See what you remember? All these unusual yeah. films that we never get to see. Yeah. Well, it's it's something that. It's a great feature of the festival because those films, you make them, they have a limited audience. Where are you going to show them? You can put them on your website, but how do you drive traffic to it? Yeah. That's the right. challenge. And we're not doing that. We're really getting out there in the weeds and, and showing the work and then talking about it. And we do have some of the coolest places, I think, to go. Um, one of them, uh, I hope this is okay. Can I just like talk about one? You can talk about whatever you want uh, to okay. talk about. <laughs> so we have no time limits, one, no subject limits, <laughs> whatever you want to talk like about. It's just like random. Fine. Okay. Whatever, so whatever. one um, of our really fun venues is uh, in Sparta, New Jersey. It's called Sparta Train Creative. Yes. And it's in a, in a renovated train station in Sparta. Oh. And it is so cool. I, it really is. And and the group behind that, um, you know, the program is just, they're just fabulous people. And, and I mean, really cinephiles. And, um, you know, we brought terrific programs there. Really, you know, not just like sort of Black Mariah light, but Black Mariah in the weeds. And then we'll do this like long. Last year, I think we were, it was like the Q&A went on for almost an hour. It was just unbelievable. That's not, we have a good, if yeah. you have a good audience yeah. that also knows what they're talking about. Yeah, or, but is also interested in discussion, yeah. Yeah. in discussing yeah. rather what, yeah, you know, they've that. seen. Yeah. yeah. So um, I just, Sparta is super. Well, that's an interesting town. There's a lot of very lot of, interesting mix of different people. Yeah, so. really interesting. And then you know we go to many colleges and universities and stuff. And and you know I get my student fix, so <laughs> I can you know do sometimes I do workshops or talkbacks with students and and so on. And I'm doing a lot of that in Syracuse now. Syracuse that's University, right. my alma times. mater, yeah. Syracuse. Love you. Yeah. So that's really fun too, to work with young people and see what they're making. And we should probably mention John Columbus because he started the whole thing. Yes, he did. And uh, did it uh -huh. for many years. Yep. John Columbus founded uh, the Black Mariah Film Festival in 1981. He came up with the idea for it. He was a, um, and still is a, an independent filmmaker himself. He's made um, a number of short and beautiful films. Um, and he approached the uh, Thomas Edison National Historical Park folks and said, listen, I have this idea for starting a film. Th and this is 1981. This is a long time ago. And um, he, he said to them, I have an idea for starting a film festival and I would like it to be in honor of Thomas Edison, who was so innovative and, you know, started his career in film by making short pieces. And that's what John wanted to do. He wasn't interested so much in features, but in short work. And um, yeah, that's, and they said, yes, you have our blessing. Huh. And, uh, you know, and then he took off from there. I can remember him showing up uh, in the early days. I was a student, they would bring all these 
containers of oh 16 God. millimeter wheels, help him get him out of his trunk, drag him to the projection. I booth. mean, it was not, it, it was so hard. It was so like probably hard. 100 pounds of, of film cans. Oh my God. It's true. It's <laughs> and the true. films would break and we'd have to oh splice them for him. God. I mean, it, that was just such an incredible um, effort that he had, you know, to go through. And he would, you know, like have all this in his car and then go to the venue and then just like, you know, I mean, now that we're streaming the media, <laughs> you know, or wow. yeah. it's on a thumb drive, mm -hmm. you know, a USB, even DCP, digital cinema package, mm -hmm. the really high end yeah. um, projection that, that I uh, curate for some venues, like the National Gallery of Art in Washington, you know, has uses DCP and, and theaters too, even indie theaters like... Yeah, uh, everyone's using it. You know, yeah. You can... I mean, you're, but you know, the media is on a thing this big because yeah. thumb drive. Much easier to carry. Way easier. So, <laughs> yeah. No it's film to Much more either. convenient. Much more convenient. Yeah. Now, how did you get started with film? I don't think I ever asked you that question. I was an undergraduate student at Syracuse University, in fact. Um, I was, an art major. Just art mm -hmm. then, uh, I was an art major and um, freshman and we had, um, you know, certain, you know, required coursework that we had to do, figure drawing, general drawing, art history, um, and basic design. And my professor was just brilliant. His name uh, is Charlie Giordano. He was a filmmaker himself who was from Boston and had uh, studied at Mass Art, Massachusetts College of Art and Design, and um, which is still to this day, I think one of the most outstanding schools of animation in particular and film. Um, and we do programs at Mass Art all the time. So um, Charlie, uh, in my, I was so lucky to have him as my teacher. And he, I was an inquisitive young person, and he was a brilliant professor. And he encouraged me to, um, you know, start shooting as part of my the projects for his course. So, um, you know, I picked up a Super 8 camera and never put it down, pretty much, until I picked up a. A video so camera. You know, you're not using the Super 8 now. <laughs> no, I don't. But I but I have shot a lot of film, and um, you know, right now I'm so busy with the festival that I haven't you know made my own work in a while. But um, I really would like to go back to the the new go back and forward with the new Super 8 technology because even to, right today now you can shoot new Super 8 film. On these new cameras, and it's like a hybrid camera. It's really cool. Well, mm -hmm. it's it's uh, it's coming back. It, it's like yeah. retro. Like exactly. Older, even Polaroids. Look, kids want to do Yeah, Polaroids. I know. It's I know. I love back. Polaroids. So it was Charlie Giordano who got me started when I was a freshman in college, 1970. Did you have a lot of girls back then in the class, or were you like one of the few? Uh, no, I wasn't one of the few. There were many women. Um, the 19th, early 70s, you know, was a pretty pretty radical uh, time um, for women to, uh, but we were all art majors, not just, we weren't film majors. So yeah, well, a lot of this was school, this was school was of, the art. of the art. And later on, it kind of, actually Syracuse is the one that started <laughs> the branching out. But originally most schools, I think yeah. that was part yeah. of the art curriculum. It was, we were art majors. So there was no, you know, lack of women um, in the art school. Yeah, we had we had mil many, many brilliant women um, that I, you know, got to know at, at Syracuse. It was a magical time. Um, Bill Viola, uh, he was he's a year younger than me. I, I didn't know you went to school. That's... He was in experimental studios yeah, and is. right and, and worked with. Uh, um, professors that were renowned at Syracuse. It was just... There's still some over time. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. So um, it was like the most amazing time to be at Syracuse. And um, very, I mean, it was very open to, we, you know, designed our own 
curriculum projects. There were so many opportunities and still are. So that's how, you know, it started. <laughs> Pretty sure they had batteries in the Super 8 cameras. You didn't have to crank them yourself. No, well, the Bolex, you the Bolex like, yeah, crank. The Bolex crank. The Bolex crank. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, then, then, and then half inch video, you know, a uh, um, half inch open reel, black and white cam, you know, um, Portapex. Mm. Those are the first video cameras I used when I went to graduate school in 1979. I don't think I ever used that. I used Super 8, mm -hmm. it was Bolexes, but I never used that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So from grad school, did you go into teaching or what did you? How did you make that? Really, transition? video. I started, you know, experimental video then when I went, was in graduate school for the first time um, at Syri back at Syracuse. And I was Charlie's TA then. And I taught uh, color and light with him, which was just fantastic. But, um, you know, that's when video started to really become a thing in the late 1970s. And it really was open reel, black and white. I mean, you had to, you know, wind it. Around. It's more like audio production mm -hmm. uh -huh. than anything and and truthfully video is you know it's magnetic tape yeah it's this that's the really the format yeah it's really what it is so um i probably worked in every film format that you could because i did photo as well and i still um you know do a lot of work in photography but um i guess the only media i haven't worked in are like 35 millimeter Film, film, movie, film. Mm. You know those big format because yeah. you know it's a lot. Yeah, yeah it's expensive. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I want to shoot in sixteen. It's cheap. Right, right. It's still, it's still beautiful, but, but still expensive oh, yeah, no, and still beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. It's Sophie playing around. Sophie, Sophie the cat Sophie, is, is Sophie. running around. Sophie <laughs> is running around with her toy. Do you want to come here and talk to everybody? Apparently not. Okay. <laughs> She'll probably jump in at some point. Yeah. She's going to rub against the microphone again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> she does. With her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Bad mouth. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Isn't she a riot? She's yeah. very funny. But this, I know this is not a cat video. Yeah. It might become one. Maybe if it will. If she jumps in a shot, Maybe it might it will. become a cat video. Yeah. <laughs> so what, did you, how'd you meet John? Because you were at Jersey City. He was also here. Well, that's a kind of a fun story, actually. Um, in 1982, I started teaching at uh, then Jersey City State College in the Media Arts Department. And um, I became the chairperson in the early 1980s. Uh, and one day I got a phone call from John saying, oh, I'm the director of Black Mariah Film Festival. We show these films, blah, blah, blah. Are you interested? I said, sure. Come bring a show. And uh, it was fantastic. It was great. It really was. And, uh, you know, he came and presented this work. And I'm like, I was all about it. I thought it was the coolest thing. And so we became friendly. And, um, you know, he came back to Jersey City, you know, annually and started showing programs. And then, um, you know, one day, I, I think he was, I in, he invited me to his home in West Orange. I, I forget why I was there. And um, his den was, you know, it was, it was like piled sky high with films and stuff. And poor John was like this. And the films <laughs> he was, all over he the was life. hoarding films. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, he, and he said, you know, I've kind of really outgrown this space. We're, I'm kind of thinking it would be good to have like, you know, a relationship with a university or something. And I said, ah. Come to Jersey City, right? So um, we had a wonderful, um, really smart dean um, that I worked with. His name is Joe Weisberg. And, um, you know, he, he always knew a good idea when he saw it. So we met at a diner in Parsippany, John and uh, Joe Weisberg and myself. And John pitched his idea to Joe of, you know, like that he, to come in residence in the media arts department. We give him an office and we get on with it. And Joe said, ah, great idea, done. 
you know, in those days, you can do that, yeah. you handshake, can handshake and you're done, right? So, um, you know, we gave John an office space and uh, the rest is kind of history. You know, I became a board member then and, um, you know, John uh, and, and uh, Jersey City State College and was really supportive of the festival. And we had an incredible uh, um, vice president and then who became the president, Carlos Hernandez, who was very involved and interested in supporting the arts. And, um, you know, we had a really great run. We had a really great run there. And now our new chapter is at Princeton. So I'm, and I'm, you know, so we're really blessed. Yeah. We're really lucky. Yeah. They seem like they're really supportive too. So. Princeton? Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. And the students are super. And I love the faculty there. Um, and uh, the Lewis Center for the Arts is just this wonderful institution. That, yeah, the um, last year's premiere was standing room only. It's standing room only. We had yeah. such a good time. I, just, I love everybody there, really. If Alex didn't save me a seat, I'll be on the floor. Exactly. <laughs> I was standing in the back the whole time. That's okay. I'm used to it. Mm -hmm. You've seen them before. Yeah, right? And our new home home, like where we sort of live, is at the Hoboken Historical Museum. Which is also very nice. Fantastic. Um, and I work with the executive director, Bob Foster, my dear friend, and we we went to um, graduate school in Syracuse together. Bob's a photographer. So it's it's good to make friends in graduate school, right? Because yeah. they'll be your friends for life. <laughs> oh, there's, um, there's Sophie. Yeah. Hi, yeah, Sophie. There, she's in there. there she is. Um, so tail. Yeah, right. So I do I program a series, a film series in Hoboken that's supported by the Hudson County Office of Cultural and Heritage Affairs and mm -hmm. Tourism. Um, and they are just again so supportive. The 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 organizations and foundations that support us, I can't say enough about them. Uh, John Keegan. Um, the Thomas Edison, uh, the Charles Edison Foundation. He, he's just like, I don't know what we would do without these people. And I, and I don't feel bad mentioning them because we're a nonprofit. We could never, ever do this without, you know, the support of uh, New Jersey State Council, the, the Thomas, the Charles Edison Foundation, Hudson County, Hoboken, Princeton. You know, yeah. it's it's you just have to say thanks to people because it matters. Um, you know, the United States doesn't have the best track record supporting the arts <laughs> as a country, not kind of like the UK. So these, you know, other foundations and organizations are just so key. We could never do it without them. Yeah. Um, now, I Boris is, is already involved with the festivals and mm -hmm. stuff. I have no idea what's going on. I just like to go to them. Yeah, um, show up. But we, without yeah. an audience, so <laughs> yeah, we need you too. No, it's true. But I'm leading to a question. Um, how do you find the selections? I have no idea, you know, where you get them from. You Those, mean the films themselves? Yeah, yeah, the submissions. Oh, yeah. well, I mean, you know, they come to us. Black Mariah, you know, we are in our 39th year, so mm -hmm. we're not like a new festival. Um, we've been around for a while. And I would say that, you know, we are kind of well known in, in a certain niche of experimental, avant-garde, documentary, mm -hmm. animation filmmakers. Um, so, and, you know, and internationally. So, you know, we put out our call for entries and um, we've migrated to Film Freeway this year. Mm -hmm. And they've been also a terrific platform, you know, to uh, bring in international and national film selections. I nod like I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So what is Film Freeway? Film Freeway <laughs> is a platform um, on the web that has created a place for film festivals and filmmakers to meet. Okay. Pretty much. I think that's mm -hmm. a I think that's a pretty right for us, would you agree? Yeah, well that's I a, think what the biggest help, I think, at least for me, mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
because once you try to enter a festival, you have to give all this information, mm -hmm. you just, you know, your background, the, the mm -hmm. synopsis of the film and stuff. Right. Well, imagine doing that if you enter like 50 or 20, whatever. You have yeah. to do it 20 times, or 30 yeah. times. Well, if you do it in like a service a like this, you upload all that stuff. And then you can send it to the festivals, but it's almost like a depositor of all your yeah. okay. info, so everything like, goes out. So you only do it once. It's like a you hub. Can, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Can it's okay. as many you know, as you want. And all the different film festivals have their own rules, regulations, you know, MO, whatever. Yeah. And uh, and Film Free Freeway, which is, you know, the, the platform that we're working with now, uh, supports all of that. So, um, you know, we put out our call for ent entries through Film Freeway, through our website, through social media and all of that. And then filmmakers that feel that we are a good fit for their work will submit. And also, I must say that we do, one thing I think is really important is to keep the fees for filmmakers as low as we possibly can. Yeah. And um, I am proud of that. There's a bunch of things that I'm very proud of in terms of the way we run the, um, you know, the rules, the regulations, how we treat filmmakers, how we work with them, and we respect them a lot. We never pre-select films, for example. Okay. There are so many film festivals that do that. Mm. You know, an inside <laughs> trap. And we're not going to talk about those. A oh. lot of big ones. Too. Oh, boy. Actually, oh, yes. the bigger the worse. Is. But we do not. Everyone, equal playing field. Level playing field for all. So if you set your... Well, here's a perfect example. I was okay. talking about the Women in Film show that um, we're doing uh, on Friday night, February 7th at Princeton. And in that program, um, you know, we have, you know, filmmakers that have been showing their work for decades. Emily Hubley, Lynn Sachs, Sue Friedrich. But we have this new beautiful film by this woman, Edith Goldenhar. She's never made a film before. And this is an amazing story about her mother and her mother's family who were Jews fleeing the Nazis in uh, World War II, and had they were taken in um, by this woman in Calais. It, it's a phenomenal piece of filmmaking, and it's her first film. So I had never heard of her. Nobody, you know, so that's my point, is that we support, of course we support the work of, of you know, longtime filmmakers. They're skilled, their work is beautiful. Lynn Sachs' work is beautiful. Emily's work is beautiful. Sue's work. Um, but, you know, everyone starts somewhere. Mm -hmm. Everyone has to start somewhere. So why shouldn't Edith have as much of a shot as uh, Emily Hubley? You see, so, yeah. you know, that matters. That really matters to me. Maybe because I'm a filmmaker myself and I, I know what it is to be rejected or accepted. But, you know, all of that, I, I understand. And... You know, that we also try to really keep the, the submission fees low. Well, without sponsors, yeah, you couldn't do that. So that's what helps. <laughs> right, help. right. So. Because it would be nice to have no fees. But then actually, would. that would actually be a bad idea. <laughs> you would have every single yeah, person sending stuff out. We can't do it, though. No. We really, we can't run the festival without the fees. I mean, you know, it takes it takes a village to run a film festival and funding comes from, you know, all different places and submission fees is one of them, you know, and then host site venues where we go and we travel, you know, they they have to support us too. They have to pay. I can't like curate a program and send it to them for free. Yeah, Can't do that. So they're all different, you know, things that we try to balance and not just rely on one, you know, stream, revenue stream. You know, I like to <laughs> spread it out. <laughs> Spreading it out, I think, is a good thing. Yeah. Because if you, if you put all your eggs in one basket, you know, yeah. You end up in an omelet. Right, exactly. You break some eggs, I think. Yeah. Now there's Sophie now. Mm -hmm. Oh, Hello, my girlfriend. <laughs> my girlfriend Hello, is here. Hi, Sophie. Want to come here? Give hmm? me a shot. You want to come here? Right. Now you can be she like, is. Uh, 
This is Sophie, everybody. Like Dr. Evil. Sophie loves <laughs> film. She works with me in my office every day. Nice. Dances around on the keyboard. Right? You look pretty uncomfortable now, so uh, I think she's going to jump no, down. No, 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 no. You can knock the microphone down. That's good. <laughs> They always go to a place where you don't where you want, don't want them. Yeah, every single that, exactly. You knock that down, Sophie. I don't want yep. to push you off. She is pretty delicate, though. She is. Sophie was born in Brooklyn. Oh, really? Yeah, she's one of the uh, the a, Brooklyn she's a artists, a she's hipsters. A hipster. Yeah, definitely. Sophie the hipster. Mm -hmm. Well, look at that. She's staying there. That's why she's not. black. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. She well, she's a girl, but she would have had a mustache. Right. Right. <laughs> Now, you, you also work with New Jersey Young Filmmakers. Yes, 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 we do. Um, and that is so fun. I um, And so do you work with New Jersey Young Filmmakers, yes. Boris. Full disclosure. <laughs> I, have a, I have a ulterior motive. Let me ask you about New Jersey Young Filmmakers, as a matter of fact. Um, I'm, I'm no longer a young filmmaker. <laughs> Uh, I aged out many years ago. We have to actually figure out where we're going to hold the uh, the jury again this year. So You're it's something for us to think You're about. Coming. You're welcome. To yeah, I, I like coming to, to Centenary. Yeah. That's fine. yeah. Um, so New Jersey Young Filmmakers, believe it or not, folks, is older than the Black Mariah Film Festival. It was started before. We are going... It's the going to be now in 2020 the 46th year hmm. of new jersey young filmmakers and the uh, mission is to um have a you know have a platform for young people in new jersey to who are interested in in media production right to um have their work shown pretty much in a nutshell why don't you fill in boris what else <laughs> Do we love about supporting no, I think these at this kids? Point we should start at New Jersey old old <laughs> filmmakers. Yeah, I know, right? But um, well, because you have a different school age categories. Mm -hmm. so middle How school, young are you in filmmakers? Middle school, high school, twelve. College, we so we right? you know twelve is the absolute. How low is can that you go? School? I mean, you teach middle yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's school. middle school. 12, twelve, fourteen. Yeah. And you know, we all know that twenty nine is the new nineteen. <laughs> I thought the cutoff so, was 26. Mm -hmm. The cutoff, we actually have cut off at 20, is it 29? Is it, I, I'm going to have to check my notes. But, um, you know, there it, it's a really, it's it's uh, important, I think, to encourage young independent filmmakers too. They're not just college age, but, you know, once they graduated, you know, a lot of them are self-funding projects and film, yeah. and so we want to have be inclusive, more inclusive than. Sometimes it's going to take you more than a couple more than college to finish. Definitely, absolutely. And some of them stay like back. <laughs> <laughs> but you, yes. so you have to go to school in New Jersey, or you have to live in. New Correct, Jersey. one or the other. There has to be a New Jersey connection. So, um, you know, if somebody goes is going to school. Um, in Princeton, but lives in Texas, that's okay, yeah. because they're going to school in New Jersey. And as a matter of fact, I might as well, I think, just talk about this for a second. Um, there's a wonderful teacher in uh, Princeton uh, teaching digital media, Tim Statella, and um, one of his students made a beautiful film um, this year that was accepted into New Jersey Young Filmmakers. And she was so encouraged by that you know, that opportunity, that an experience she never had, that she entered the film in Black Mariah, and it was chosen by the pre-screeners and the jury for this season. So I think that's kind of neat. So that's should, really a young person. You mentioned that not only Black Mariah, but most festivals have a pre-screening section yes. session first. Oh yeah. Because if you had a final jury, they're not going to sit through hundreds and hundreds. <laughs> Take forever, Impossible. so they have to be pre-screened by a different yes. type of sort of sort of a jury, right. and uh, and then that moves on to the final jury. Correct, and that's a common thing. Yeah, oh, definitely. There there has to be a process of you know weeding out films that 
just really are not a good fit for whatever reason. Yes, for those of us who are not involved, can you give me a brief walkthrough of that process? Because I, I have no idea. Sure. I, I'm getting the basics. Sure. Like how many how many submissions does Black Mariah get? Um, you know, it varies from year to year. Mm -hmm. The last two years, we've had over 400 submissions. Okay. And then that will be whittled down. That This season, we're, we have uh, 51 films that are going to travel. So it's, it's, it's very selective. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, like about just a little over 10%. Uh, other festivals accept more, but maybe films get shown less. So, you know, one of our agendas is to show films often. So filmmakers who wind up in Black Mariah really do... Um, get an outstanding opportunity for their films to be shown all over the place mm -hmm. for a year. Um, okay, so anyway, films come into Film Freeway. Right. I have a group of pre-screeners, and everyone is either a filmmaker, a curator, a professor of film studies, or a professor of film or video production, someone who has really got the chops. And um, they look at the work, they score it, and um, we have three scores per film. Okay. So it really is a lot of a lot of work. I look at every film. I'm yeah. a pre-screener. Okay. And I look at every film. It's a lot. Yeah. Of film to look at. But it's got to be chill. Each film has to be. It has to get high marks from three people to get Correct. to the final. So it's it got to get be high marks three from times. three different yeah. people. Right. So it's not just like one person's vision of a film. Yeah. I mean, because like right now, the three of us could mention a film and we might have completely different. Well, quite often we would talk about film and I would love it, you would hate and it. And I would hate it or around. something, yeah. right? And, and it, that's normal. That's it is. It's it totally normal. Yeah. So well, it's, That shouldn't be a final. It's... It's more fair to have different people look at it, score exactly. it, and then if three people like it, moves on. Right. So, you know, and again, that's the whole thing, a level of a level playing field that I, I really feel is very important. So, um, yeah, so that's the pre-screening process. And then depending on, um, you know, the scores, the, you know, I mean, the films really rise on their own. They do. Mm -hmm. They rise on their own, Alex. And well, then... Good um, stuff will make it. Hmm? Good stuff will make it. Of course. It. I mean, if it's really good, yeah, it's 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 it. hard to ignore something, even if you personally say, "Oh God, it's not my cup of tea." But if yeah. something's well made, it, it's well made, so it's right. not going to. And because be the all the different voices of the pre-screeners and stuff, you know, it also does. I mean, I always say to people, you've got to recuse yourself if you're like a really good friend of a person or something. Yeah. You know, and and I do that too. Mm -hmm. You know, if I. I have no problem recusing myself. Well, I mean, if you want to remain impartial, you, you have to. Yeah, you do. You do. Although I'm really pretty good at remaining impartial and being objective. I'm, I'm pretty good at it. I am kind of relentless in that regard. Hmm. Um, so anyway, you know, so we have hundreds of films. Mm -hmm. They get whittled down. And then um, we have a, the formal jury. I, we are so lucky that the jurors that we have are amazing. Um, Margaret Parsons is the uh, head curator of film at the National Gallery of Art, Washington, D.C. And she has uh, been a loyal juror now for a number of years and is just a brilliant curator and um, historian and viewer of film. I mean, she lives it. And to have her there as an impartial, but just like really just brilliant person looking at the work. I mean, you know, it's, that's a gift. Yeah. And um, our other juror, Henry Baker, is also, you know, I mean, his, his vision is just undeniable. His, um, he's a filmmaker and video artist, um, graphic designer. Um, he's won Emmys. Um, millions, you know, a gazillion awards for his own work. And, um, you know, the, the donation of time is, is formidable when we actually do the jury. We, we go down to Washington and, you know, all work together. And it, it's, 
many, many hours. So is the jury, is it, is it like American Idol where they sit together and they watch the films together? <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. And every piece gets watched in its entirety. And then there's no such thing as I've seen two minutes of it. I'm done. Oh. No, we watch. Okay, so no Simon Cow. Okay. Nope. We watch everything in but its entirety. Also, at that point, you're already getting, they're already pre screened, so you're getting good stuff. Yes. So you're not going to get. Clunkers. No, no, no. Right. right. And your jury changes. It's not always the same. Yes. And then. The pre screeners change. Yeah, well, well. Mm -hmm. So you're watching them together. Uh, do you have uh, a form? Do you take notes? Yes, we do. We take copious notes. Okay. We have, you know, forms for each film. And what the jury's job is at that point is to um, give awards, you know, determine the awards, oh, okay. mm -hmm. pretty much. And then I also choose, um, you know, they, they choose the Stellar Awards, Global Insight Awards, which uh, deal with films that really have issues of social justice or international importance or whatever. That's that category. Okay. And then the next uh, level is jury's choice, jury citation. And then there's a category where I choose films that I know will program really well within that, you know, these are films that are already, have, you know, made, been finalists, mm -hmm. so to speak. So among those finalists, what's, what are going to be, what's going to be in the tour? Okay. And so the jury actually is assigning awards and then I choose um, a group of films that I feel will tour really well with the collection. Now, after you, after you're scoring and taking notes, uh, is there a discussion? Mm -hmm. Is there Always. negotiations? Um, nego I wouldn't say negotiations so much, but there is really open-ended, um, freewheeling discussion that's really intelligent mm -hmm. and fun and insightful. And I, I, I say this, uh, you know, just really, I know I sound like Pollyanna, but it is really true. There's no like, you know, kind of like, mm, it's it's like the opposite of American yeah. Idol, I guess. <laughs> well, mm. you don't have these enormous recording contracts riding over your head. That's true. Either. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Yes. Excellent point. Mm -hmm. and how many venues did you... Go last year. I'm going to change it. 60? 60. 60. 60. Mm. A lot. Oh, so you're yeah. packing up your, your little thumb drives. I know. I don't go to every program. Yeah. But I go to a lot. I do go to a lot. I mean, some, you know, I'm not traveling to the Roxy in San Francisco mm -hmm. because um, they would have to pay for my travel. That's a lot of money you know, for them. So, you know, venues that are pretty far, unless they have like some kind of, you know, big budget to yeah. support that. Um, the beauty of it now is that, you know, we, we're not carrying around all these great big heavy yeah. films yeah. and I can stream the media. I can mail us a, a thumb mm -hmm. drive, you know, so, yeah. So are the, you know, the reach is, um, further than ever before this past season um we were in california we were in kalamazoo michigan we were all we were in florida all you know in, in um massachusetts uh, up and down the east coast of course is very um yeah popular for our you know festival but in michigan uh wisconsin all over and and i've already been approached by um some venues now in canada which i'm really excited about vancouver and toronto so um and we also go to uh the uk every year to um the university of gloucestershire and um so you know all over the place yeah that's one feature of the festival it's different yeah. Black America, because other ones, it's one venue, one show. Correct. Maybe a few days, but it's mm -hmm. one place. This one For a week is or the yeah. opposite. You go. Yeah. yeah. And your film can be in 50 different places. Correct. Just with one yeah. festival. Right. So it's a blessing and a curse, though, for us. Yeah. Because um, you know, we're kind of vagabonds, you know? Um, festivals, other festivals that are destination festivals, 
you know, I think it's easier for them to fundraise because, yeah. you know, all the local businesses can pile on and all of that, but we don't have that. So that's why we have to always be yeah. mindful and, you know, strategizing about how to I imagine there's stay a, afloat. A fair amount of, you know, towns, college towns in, in the West and Midwest that are starving for, you know, good film festival come through. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And um, and that's a great thing. And, and I must say the filmmakers are so helpful with that. They really are. Um, and, and that's how we got, we did this new program in Kalamazoo, Michigan, actually. It was through the uh, through a filmmaker who was teaching in the area and said, oh, could we, and of course, mm -hmm. you know, we went to uh, University of Texas, Austin this year, too, thanks to the efforts of a, a filmmaker. So this happens, and you're right. Yeah, that's, that's a terrific way to program. I love doing that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you have people who start and become big. <laughs> yeah. So a couple of names. Yeah, a couple of names. So should we are we gonna drop do you, name, you name you drop, drop do, dropping some names? You can there? drop some names. <clears throat> well, I guess Robert Rodriguez is one of the big names hmm. that we could drop. Yeah, that was Bedhead, right? That was Bedhead was Bedhead. his film in Black Mariah. Before El Maria. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And um, you know, he's uh a pretty successful guy, yeah, and filmmaker, pretty did. popular well, filmmaker. <laughs> that guy, Robert Rodriguez, right? Um, yeah, and uh, well, one of my personal favorite filmmakers is Bill Morrison. Bill Morrison's early career, he um, he's not like Bill's work is not necessarily in the realm of commercial cinema, mm -hmm. but. Um, I turned on TCM last night, and there was Bill on TCM um, being interviewed about a silent film. So I thought that was pretty cool. And Bill's early work was um, all part of the Black Mariah Film Festival, and um, his work is in the um, National Archive. And um, I personally consider him a national treasure, his the film that he made um, within the last year, uh, you know, traveled all over the country and in important many important film venues. It's a feature film called Dawson City Frozen Time. It's absolutely magnificent, and it's about the origins of uh, film in the United States and historically and made from archival footage that was unearthed in the frozen reaches, yes, of Canada <laughs> in the ice. For real. It's just amazing. So, unlike the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> unlike the Blair Witch Project, right. So um, I'm doing a shout out here to Bill Morrison, who's uh, who I consider one of the, the great filmmakers of the 20th and 21st century um and you know there there are other people too like emily hubley well, who's yeah. you know she's a dynasty of of animators her parents uh john and faith um you know were academy award yeah, about five, winners and, five so. yeah right hmm. wow so i mean they're just like so many uh filmmakers who've shown in Black Mariah and uh, you know we're just we've been blessed to have to have them it's also interesting to see work especially first time or second time filmmakers and then you a few years later you see them you know, right it's kind of fun it's like oh yeah. I saw that one yeah <laughs> yeah well actually there's a, a film that we had in the festival last season um uh that was a, a short and, and just terrific film um, called I'll Never, wait, just give me a second here. I'll Never Bother Another Chicken Again. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. 
It's I remember just that. super. That was that was last year or year last, before. Last twenty nineteen, and um, so there. You know, I watch HBO like hundreds of thousands of people in the United States, and one of my favorite shows was True Detective with uh, Mahershala Ali that season. Okay. So I'm you know watching. I just always sometimes I watch credits, and there, lo and behold, was you know the filmmaker. Um, and she was, you know, working on that show. I mean, you, you know, there's yeah. people, you, you see their names um, that, you know, from Black Mariah and to other. Well, sometimes you I'll see know. people who do commercial work because oh, you yeah. have to pay your bills. Absolutely. But at the same time, they want to do a passion more, project. Yeah, something that's more art related mm -hmm. than what they usually get paid for. And it's interesting to see that you recognize the name yeah. and you're like, oh, okay, I've so seen true. this person's work. So true. Because... You know, people want to do fun and interesting mm -hmm. stuff in addition to just making making a living. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Well, one filmmaker, his name is Tom Brown. He's an animator. He had a, a film called Teeth. Do you remember that one, Boris? I do. <laughs> <laughs> that was another. He film had that project. film um, uh, in Black Mariah maybe three, four years ago, so and. That film took him eight years to make. It's a four-minute film that is just fabulous. And for him, it was a passion project. I mean, he makes, he does really well. He has no, you know, his day job really brings in, you know, significant uh, salary for him. I mean, he's very successful, mm -hmm. is my point. Um, <laughs> but he spent eight years working on this passion project called Teeth, you know. So we were the benefactors of that, yeah, of his work. Not to be confused with the horror film. Yeah, I, okay, yes. Yeah, no, no, this was an animated, but it's kind of, oh, no, no, no. Ooh, Sophie. Oh, you're Sophie. Yeah, Sophie. I think she's had enough. Oh, no, no, come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, there are certain people in our audience who may confuse the two, so. Just to make it wanted to make that clear. A little okay. different kind of team. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sounds good. Although that one was now my earphones upside down. Right? <laughs> so um are we about ready to wrap, you think? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, do you wanna say anything in, that we didn't cover by the festival or I don't know, it was pretty I'm kind of exhausted now. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, from all this film talk. Well, I will put a, yeah. a festival link. On okay, the sounds good. And anyone who's interested in finding out more, come out to see yeah. the films. Yeah, and more than once because if you see different venues, it's a different shop. It's I custom not, curate yeah. programs at all the venues. I mean, maybe sometimes I'll repeat a film or this or that, but every single program, there's no program that is a hundred percent the same. Mm. Everyone is different. Yeah. And now you're going to have completionists to have to go to every one. I know. You could. Yeah. A lot of people do come out. You know, we have loyal supporters. And you have a show in West Orange coming up in, yeah, in we March. Do. Right? That's, no, no, that's no. That's March. opening kind of opening weekend. February is packed. Is it February? Yeah, it's in, in February. February. Oh, that's right. Because that classic, West Orange classic film also ends in February. Right. And uh, right around Super Bowl. So you're going to be before that. We're, we're there on Sunday, uh, February 10th. For our matinee, our Sunday matinee. So we have like one, two, three. It's a trifecta. And then the week after, we have the Hoboken premiere. So, um, yeah. So that's at the AMC Essex 9 in West Orange. West Orange. It's a dining theater. You can actually a know. dine in theater. I I've know. I've been to that one. Comfy yeah, seats yeah, yeah. And, and food. That's fun. That's a lot of fun. And we sort of do it all at the same time every year in honor of Thomas Edison's oh, birthday. Oh, birthday, yeah. And uh, the Thomas Edison National Historical Park folks bring in Edison cake. It's cupcakes with Edison's, you know, Edison's face made up by cupcakes. It's really and, fun. And I bring Tesla cakes. So they're fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we should have, have a cupcake Tesla fight. Cake. Of a, yeah, like, Tesla Edison's cake. like dower face. That would be fun. Cake. Tesla cake, right? Tesla cake. I like it. I like, yeah, a I like cupcake it. Fight. Right, right, so, right. Well, thank you very much, Jane, it's for my pleasure, uh, for guys. To it's us. really been fun. And, uh, yeah. We'll do another one at some point. Yeah. Yes. Thanks again. Sounds Thanks. good. Good night, everybody. Good night and good luck. <laughs> that was... Uh... Yes. <laughs>
George Clooney. Only kidding. Oh, George Clooney. 